Today I'd like to talk about carbohydrates. In previous videos I talked about the importance of protein intake for achieving your performance and body composition goals. Getting your carb intake correct is equally important to achieve both of these goals, especially body composition. In other words, how fat or how lean you want to be. Carbs are basically different chemical forms of sugar. That's why they taste so good. Main sources being pasta, rice, potato, starchy veg, fruit and sugary foods. It's important we do have carbs and it's important we have the right amount of carbohydrates because often foods that are high sources of carbohydrates are also high sources of dietary fiber and dietary fiber is really important for our gut health. If we have too low carbohydrate intake, we can get some problems with our thyroid function and also carbohydrates can help to manage cortisol levels in times of stress. They make you feel really good when you take on board carbs because when you have carbs, your body will release serotonin, which is a pleasure neurotransmitter, so that it feels great. And that combined with the, the sugary goodness makes them very difficult for people to give up. When we take on board carbs, they enter the blood uh, glucose, so they increase our blood glucose levels and our body will release insulin to manage that blood glucose levels and store some of those carbohydrates or glucose as glycogen. As I've discussed before, glycogen is basically like our instant access energy account. It's how we can get energy into our body quickly to fuel activity that requires quick energy. So we have three energy systems. We have the ATP or phosphorogen system. That's our sprint, naught to 10 seconds, super, super high intensity energy system. It's powered and fueled by creatine phosphate and ATP. That's produced within the body and only lasts, like I say, naught to 10 seconds. So stuff like heavy lifting and short sprints is fueled by that energy system. The main system that we used um, glycogen and, and blood glucose for is the second system, the aerobic or the oxidative system, or the glycolytic system, whichever, whichever name you want to use. Basically, this is our high intensity energy system, somewhere sort of between 10 seconds and a minute, we'll be using that energy system. And that will burn through that glucose and glycogen. And if we don't have enough of that during such workouts, they will feel particularly uncomfortable and your performance will suffer. So there is an importance to having glucose and, and glycogen, which are, you know, if I'm just going to clarify that again, glucose is, is the immediate effect of taking on board carbohydrates and then glycogen is where we store that. The third energy system that we have is the aerobic system. That's the one we use most of the day. Right now I'll be using the aerobic system when you go for a steady state cardio, stuff like that, you'll be using the energy system of the aerobic system or the oxidative system. And that is fueled by glucose, glycogen. It can also be fueled by fatty acids. And that's really important to know because that means we can fuel it with our body fat. And if you're trying to lose fat, that's what we're going to be using. Now, how much carbohydrate you need is what you want to know right now. And that really depends on an individual. The first thing that you need to know is that when we have carbohydrates, we can store some as glycogen. We can store actually up to around 2000 calories of energy as glycogen. That's a lot of calories, okay? If we convert that back into carbohydrates, uh, 500 grams of carbohydrates will provide 2000 calories of energy. So we won't need to be full of glycogen on a daily basis. It's very rarely that we're going to need to fuel ourselves at that high energy, high intensity level for that many calories. Each athlete's requirement or each person's requirement of how much carbohydrates they need will depend on, on a number of factors. One of the key ones being insulin sensitivity or insulin resistance or carb tolerance. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a phrase that's kind of bandied around a lot. And that, what that really is, is how your body responds to taking on board carbohydrates. If you are more insulin sensitive, then effectively your body can manage that intake of carbohydrates better 
than if you are insulin resistant, okay? So you, I like to describe it as carb tolerant for most people, it's a bit easier to understand. But basically, in the majority of cases, if you are a leaner person, so if you have good muscle and little fat, you can be more flexible with your carbohydrate intake than if you are a higher fat athlete. And if you are more sedentary, you will also not be able to take on board carbs as well as someone who is more active. Now, I am generalizing here. Obviously, there is a way to test this, but as a general rule for most people, if you use this analogy, you will get good results. So what I'm saying is, if you've got someone who's lean, has good muscle tone, doesn't have to be big, but has good muscle tone, they will generally be able to eat more carbohydrates without getting fat, and they will still be able to lose fat with more carbohydrates on the body, mainly because they will just be uh, better, they have a better metabolism to deal with that. So I'm going to generalize and put people into different categories and, and give you an idea of what I think your carbohydrate intake can be. And this would be sort of how much you require. And if you decide to have more than that, you may not get the same results if you're looking to get leaner. So we're talking about people trying to get leaner, trying to um, lose fat. And if we start with the overweight and sedentary group, this is the group that can have the fewest amount of carbohydrates. So if you're not working out, you need very little carbs in your system. Because I said before, we have the three different energy systems. If we ignore the sprint system for now, because that is produced within the body, it does need to be replenished. We do need to obviously use energy to rebuild those um, chemicals. But if we just talk about the anaerobic and the aerobic energy systems, so the one that requires uh, glucose and glycogen, and the one that can use those two, but can also use fat. Most of the day, if you're sedentary, you're going to be in the aerobic system. And the aerobic system, you can get away with using fat as an energy source. So fat is a slower release energy source from the body. It's a bit like trying to burn coal. It doesn't get to you very quickly, but it will get you and it will fuel you in a slow process. So if you're sedentary, you'll be in that period of time, in that, in that aerobic system nearly all of the day. If you have glycogen, you will use that first though. So if you have large amounts of carbohydrates, your body is always going to use the energy system that is most easily accessible, which is your glycogen, your blood glucose. If you are fueling yourself throughout the day with carbohydrates, why would your body tap into the body fat? It won't. And the run, one of the main reasons we don't burn fat easily is it's a survival mechanism for human beings. If you look in our past, obviously when we were just wandering tribes, having fat is going to help keep us alive. First of all, it's an energy source, as we talked about. Second thing is it's an insulator, it's keeping us warm. So if we have, and, it, and it's essential for our body functions as well, so we need fat in our body. So our body doesn't want to give that away easily. It doesn't know that, oh, we won't get a six pack though, mate. It just knows that fat is going to keep us alive. So it will always use the energy source that is more readily available and it will try to hang on to fat for as long as possible because that's what's going to keep us going. So if you have glycogen, you won't burn fat. That is what you have to understand, whatever category you're in right now. That means if you're not doing anything every day and you're overweight and you're looking to get lean, you have a, and you're overweight, you've got loads of fat in your body, you've got loads of energy to use. Why are you needing to take on board more energy through the day? You don't need to. So your carbohydrate intake can be as little as 50 grams of carbohydrates per day, which is a tiny amount, okay? 50 grams of carbohydrates. If you're having 50 grams of rice, that's pretty much 50 grams of carbohydrates there because rice is almost all carbohydrates. That's like one small portion of rice through the day. The rest of the day, you don't need carbohydrates, okay? If you're taking on board the vegetables, um, if you're having green vegetables, by the way, I generally would say that I wouldn't count those too much in your carbohydrate intake because of the amount of fiber, and we won't go into that too much detail, but just for now, 50 grams of carbohydrates is all you're going to need through the day. And that's just going to get you through those periods of the day where you need to go into your aerobic system, which is very rarely, but um, believe it or not, we do tap into that in higher energy stuff. For instance, if you're getting up and out of the chair, you could say you're going into the ATP system because you're doing like weightlifting. Um, so that 
and that's what you need to understand about energy systems. It's not like we suddenly go, right, okay, I'm in one, now I'm in two, now I'm in three. You, you're constantly working between those different energy systems. But 50 grams of carbohydrates, that's 200 calories of energy that you will use during some periods of high intensity. That's the maximum amount you need through the day. Bear in mind, when I say all of these numbers, if you dramatically cut your carbohydrate intake overnight, you will feel terrible for one to two weeks. So I would suggest you can either do that, you can fast and cut them out completely and then ride out the horrible feeling or you can taper it and it's entirely up to you. But just always be aware that if you are making changes, if you're looking at your diet and if you've been tracking your food and you suddenly decide to cut carbs like this, then be prepared to suffer and feel like you've got the flu. That is how it feels. I know I've done various different dietary experiments in the past for these vlogs. Um, and one of them was a keto and I did a three day fast and you do not feel great during that period of time. And if you have, uh, if you're a sugar fiend and you go through it, we, we do a challenge here at CrossFit where we get people to cut out sugar for a month. Again, they get those same feelings of, of feeling horrible. And that can be like say one to two weeks, depending on how addicted to carbs and sugars you are. So, Obese and sedentary, 50 grams, because that's enough energy to fuel your activity. If you are working out and you're overweight and you need to get leaner, you can bring that up between 50 to 100 grams. So you can have somewhere between 50 and 100 grams of carbohydrates. That's going to give you between 200 and 400 calories of energy. I would suggest that you take these um, around your workout times, not obviously immediately before a workout, but after your workout or, or a couple of hours before to give you um, that fuel. You can take it afterwards and that'll replenish your glycogen supplies. Generally, it's better to have it the night before or a few hours if you're training first thing in the morning, of course, or a couple of hours, two, three hours before if you're training in the afternoon, because that's going to give you that, that level of glycogen to be able to perform at high levels of intensity for a period of time. So you, as, as I said before, you really only use, you only need to use glucose and glycogen at high intensities. At lower intensities, you can use um, the body fat and that's what we want to get to that point. So if you are working out, have some carbohydrates to get you through those high intensity workouts and allow you to push your performance and see good results. And not just a physical benefit, but also a mental benefit. If you're going to a workout and you feel like crap and your results are depleting, it's not necessarily very motivating for you. So if you are trying to train with no carbs, you will get that feeling of demotivation because your performance will drop down even though you might be getting leaner as a result. So yes, 50 to 100 grams if you are working out and you are still overweight. And again, always be thinking about, we're trying to get to a point where we have very little, well, no, no glycogen, so that our body then taps into our fat reserve. That's what we're looking to get to. Um, that's how we're going to shred fat. If you are leaner, generally you should be a little bit more insulin sensitive, therefore carb tolerant, and you can increase your carbs somewhere to around 100 to 150 grams, and you should still see good results. All of this data that I'm giving, all this information I'm giving you is very much dependent on a person, so you will always have to be checking your results as you go along and making adjustments. But as a rough guide, 100 to 150 grams, if you are lean. And if I say lean, I'm talking somewhere for guys, definitely sub 20% body fat, if you can measure your body fat. Um, if you're not sure about that number, sub 20% in the right lighting, you should see some abs, okay? And for girls, a little, you maybe be like 22%, but again, you, you know, if you look hard enough, you should see some abs if you are lean enough, okay? The leaner you are, the more carbs you can have. Um, and that's, a, that's a, again, a ger general guide through that. There's a little anomaly category I would put in amongst this carb intake, and that is for people that have been on low carb diets for a long period of time, and you've been tracking and measuring, okay? Don't just tell me you've been on low carbs, and then you suddenly weigh and measure, and you realize that actually you've been having tons of carbs, but you just didn't weigh it very well. But if you have low carbs for a long period of time and you're not seeing any results, you may have affected your thyroid function um, 
and how you're just basically your, your, your body's meta metabolism. And if that's the case, you may have to look at increasing your carbs up to the same number as um, a lean athlete or someone who's working out on a regular basis and who's quite lean. You can also experiment with carb cycling if, if you are suffering from, um, from any kind of metabolic damage from cutting carbs too much for such a long period of time. And generally when you see this with someone, it'll be someone who has not just cut carbohydrates, but also cut calories to far too low a level. Um, if you've been dieting super, super hard for a long period of time, you've cut your carbs out, but you also your calories have been too low, you can do some damage to metabolism and therefore you need to correct that balance to see some results. So you can either just increase your carbs to a smaller amount, uh, sorry, to a larger amount, but not that big, so 100 to 150 grams. What you can also try is carb cycling, and that sounds confusing, but all it is, is you take more carbs on board on more active days and fewer carbs on board on less active days. For example, you could go up to 200 grams of carbohydrates on a day where you are working out particularly hard and being very active, and then drop it down to 100 grams of carbs on a day where you're not being so active. So if you are one of those low carb, long-term dieters, have a look at carb cycling as an option for yourself. The final category I would put in here would be the super athlete, the guy that, or a girl that's working super hard. They're already lean, that they're already at a very lean level, but they want to get to that next stage. You want to get super ripped. This could be for competition. This could be um, weightlifters that are trying to make weight or fighters that are trying to make weight, bodybuilders that may be trying to get super lean for a competition or just shed that fat for a photo shoot. All of these issues, um, you can apply this rule to. Now, it really depends. If you're a hardcore athlete you're trying to get lean, it depends on a few factors. First of all, how much do you want to suffer? If you're training super hard and you just want to shed that last bit of fat and you're not too worried about your performance for the next couple of weeks, you just want to get lean, then you can have fewer than 100 grams of carbohydrates and you will definitely get leaner, but you will feel pretty bad during the workouts and you will see a bit slower and a bit weaker. You will see people do this if they are, like I say, trying to make weight for a fight. They will do this where they effectively strip out all the carbohydrates and strip fat and it's why it's important that they hit the weigh-in, but then they have effectively two days, uh, depending on what governing body they have to get energy back on board and try to restore themselves so they can deliver a good performance on the day. Um, so you can do that. You can strip right down. Like I say, it will feel pretty terrible and your workouts will suffer, but that is a way to, to strip that last bit of fat out. But it's a very much like you have to be aware of what that's going to feel like. I think more effective is similar to, I said to the people that have been on low carbs for a while, is to cycle those carbohydrates. So on those days where you're resting to really cut the carb rates right back. But on the days where you're training hard, you can bring those carbs right up, depending on um, the size of you as an athlete and how much lean tissue you have and how much you're working out. Up to around 300 grams of carbohydrates would be perfectly acceptable for someone who is a hard training and a, and a very lean athlete. So 300 grams of carbohydrates, just to refresh your memory, four calories of energy per carbohydrate. So that's 1200 calories from carbohydrates. If you are taking that on board, I would still look to have that number, that magic number that I always like to see is about a third, a third, a third proteins, fats, and carbs. You may have worked out from this that if you are stripping the carbs back to low numbers, such as 50 to 100 grams of carbs, your, your carb numbers won't be a third, they'll be lower. But we're talking about if you're really working to, to strip fat down and you want to work hard to do that, that's those carb numbers that you need. That's the, the sort of the tick over number of carbohydrates to get you through the day. So that's the minimum amount of carbs you need to get you through the day. Um, you can survive on that. Obviously you can try a bit more, but what you're gonna wanna try is, is test your results, see what results you're getting with different levels. I want to just summarize the importance of that. And I want to get people to, to get this in their heads. And I'll talk about this in many videos. Remember, if you are looking to strip fat, your body has to want to go into your fat and use it. And therefore, you cannot have blood glucose, excessive levels of blood glucose and glycogen, importantly, in your system because your body will want to use that first. So make sure that your carbohydrate intake is appropriate 
for your body composition and performance goals. I hope you found it interesting and useful and going to take some of that advice on board with what you're doing at the moment. If you have questions and advice, because I tend to ramble on on these videos and you may not understand what I've talked about or you may have missed something, please, 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 I am more than happy to answer any questions. Either email me at jeremy at crossfitchildren.com, put some comments in, happy to help. I'm going to try and keep really consistent with this video output over the next few months. Please stay tuned, like and subscribe, all of those things you're supposed to do to these videos. And I shall speak to you guys very soon. Next video is on steady state cardio. Hope you enjoy that one too. Thanks guys.